Okay, tonight's dinner, fettuccine carbonara with green peppercorns and grilled chicken. Stay tuned. All right, before we get started on this recipe, I just wanted to clarify something. This is a more North American style carbonara, which involves uh, a cream base versus the Italian style, which is an egg yolk uh, based sauce. So uh, just wanted to clarify that if you're looking for the authentic carbonara, don't watch right, this let's video. let's start by going over the ingredients for this recipe. So I have one shallot and two cloves of garlic. I have uh, four tablespoons of all-purpose flour. I have one cup of 35% cream, so our heavy cream. I've got two cups of chicken stock, and this can be a, a homemade stock, can be a canned stock, could be a bouillon cube if you have to use that. I've got uh, a fresh pasta here, fresh fettuccine. This could be a dried fettuccine, it could be a spaghetti, it could be a linguine. It could also be a short pasta like a rigatoni or a, a bow tie, farfalle or penne. Um, this is a Parmesan cheese, just shaved Parmesan cheese. This could be shredded. Uh, could also be a Romano cheese. Could be any cheese that you like. Uh, green peppercorns. These are a brined green peppercorn from France. Um, if you cannot find these, you can try to find a dried or freeze-dried green peppercorn. If you can't find those, you can just use a cracked black peppercorn. I do have some herbs here for uh, garnish towards the end. These are optional. I've just got Italian parsley and some fresh chives. It's just going to brighten the dish up and make it look a little bit better, taste a little bit more fresh. We've got four slices of side bacon. This is just regular smoked side bacon. Again, as I mentioned, if you're uh, Italian, you could be using uh, pancetta or you could be using the guancale, uh, which is the smoked pork cheek. But this is just regular side bacon, but use as you wish. And optional again, uh, just for some added protein, if you want to make more of a meal out of this dish, um, I'm just going to do some quick grilled chicken breast to slice over top of the pasta. So those are the ingredients, so let's get cooking. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get our uh, chicken grilled off. Uh, the reason I'm doing this first is uh, it's probably going to set the smoke detector off in the house, so uh, <laughs> I don't want to involve you in that. Uh, so just uh, salt, pepper, a little bit of olive oil, and uh, we'll get that in the grill pan. Uh, just quick note, I've got the grill pan obviously preheated on high. We've got our water coming up to a boil. This is just plain salted water. And we've got our pan here just preheating on low. Okay guys, our chicken breasts are just about done. We're just going to remove them from the heat. We'll throw a cover on the pan and we'll just set them aside and we'll bring them out when we're ready for them. All right, the smoke is mostly cleared. Let's start our, our sauce prep. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our smoked side bacon. Like I said, we just have about four or five slices here and we're just going to cut it into small pieces. Nice sharp knife. And we've got our pan ready to go over here, preheated. A little splash of olive oil in the pan. Pan is preheated. And goes the bacon. So 
going to want to cook this bacon until it's rendered most of its fat, until it's uh, just about getting crispy. Break it up as you go. While that's cooking, let's go back to our shallot. Board a quick wipe down. So we're just going to dice our shallot. Shallot's ready to go. Got our garlic here and our garlic press. We're just going to press our two cloves of garlic. Again, this is a non traditional, I think, Italian thing. I don't believe they use garlic in carbonara, so this is an addition. There's our garlic. Check the bacon. All right, we're going to add our shallots and garlic, and we're going to continue to cook. So just turn the heat down a little bit. We don't want to burn the garlic. So add our shallots and our garlic in. to do is see we've got a little bit of fat in the pan here we're going to utilize that to make sort of a uh, aromatic roux let's call it essentially you're going to be making a, a bit of a, a velouté with the bacon the shallots the garlic and the chicken stock so we've got the flour here this is four tablespoons of flour and all we're going to do is we're going to take it and we're going to sprinkle it just over the pan. And then we're going to uh, stir that in. We've got our chicken stock standing by. So we're just gonna stir that in to soak up the uh, olive oil and the bacon drippings. So we're now going to uh, deglaze this pan slowly. We're going to add a bit of chicken stock in to begin with. We'll scrape the bottom up. Here we go with the chicken stock. We can turn the heat back up. And we're going to scrape the bottom of the pan. Get all those brown bits off where all the flavor is. You could have added a little bit of white wine if you wanted to here as well. I don't have the bottle open. I'm not going to open it for this dish. doesn't really require it. Let's 
it'll switch to a whisk here shortly to make sure all that flour is incorporated. Heat on high right now. We'll add the last bit of our chicken broth, chicken stock. Here's what I'm using. I don't know if you can see this can here. Just so I can identify them in the grocery store. They are made in uh, or from France and they are in a brine. So be careful with the salt content of your pasta. You're going to be using a little bit of the brine. Also, the Parmesan cheese is salty and the bacon is salty. Peppercorns go in with a little bit of brine. We'll incorporate that. cream, 35% cream, one cup, pour hot it over the stove, we'll whisk that in. Turn the burner down. We've brought that back to a boil. We'll turn it down, let it simmer a bit. We're going to cook that flour a little bit more. We don't want any raw flour taste. In the meantime, we've got our pasta here. So this is 350 grams of pasta. This will feed probably a couple of people, a couple of very hungry people, small family. Again, you can use a dried pasta instead of the fresh pasta. We're going to cook this pasta al dente. So it's still going to have a little bit of a bite, a little bit of a tooth to it. So fresh pasta generally only will take about three minutes to cook. Dry pasta somewhere around the eight minute mark usually. Sauce is looking good. It's gonna thicken a bit more when we add that Parmesan cheese in there, so we'll keep an eye on it. If you think it's a little too thick and you need to add a little bit of more liquid, you can add a little bit of your pasta water. So we're gonna add our pasta to our boiling water, boiling salted water. While that pasta is cooking, I'm going to take a little bit of uh, chives, do a little bit of a garnish here, just some fresh chopped chives, a little bit of uh, fresh chopped Italian parsley, So just a quick word, normally what I would do if I was cooking for a family or cooking for more than one, I'm a, I'm a bachelor so uh, just cooking for one tonight and obviously I've got more sauce and more pasta than what I require. So in this case uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the pasta that I want and I'm going to quickly, rapidly chill the pasta that I want to save for another night. I'm, uh, if I was cooking it for a family, I would normally dump the pasta directly from the uh, boiling pot into the sauce and toss that. 
but since uh, I'm going to be saving some pasta for another evening, I don't want to add the sauce to it, so we'll keep the sauce separate from that. All right. Parsley and chives are cut, chopped. Set that aside. Okay. Back to our sauce. Away. Our pasta needs about another minute or so. We're going to turn the sauce off the heat completely. We're going to add our Parmesan cheese and let that melt. We'll save a little tiny bit of Parmesan for garnish. The rest can go in. And we'll just stir that around. Again, if you think your sauce is getting a little too thick, you've reduced it too much and the cheese is going to thicken it up a little bit, you can add a little bit of uh, pasta water if required. I think this is going to be just about perfect actually. You can check your salt, see if you need to add salt, but like I said, with the bacon, the cheese, and the stock, you probably have enough salt in there already. Of course, you've got green peppercorns in there, so you shouldn't need to add any more pepper, although if you wanted to add more peppercorns, you could. So that cheese is now incorporated in there. We're going to get our colander. I'm just going to drain the pasta. for any pasta that you're not going to be consuming. Get it ready under cold running water. So you can have a ice, wa uh, ice water bath standing by. You want to completely stop the cooking. Alrighty, we're ready to plate this up. So just grab a bowl here. And you can see that. Zoom you out a bit. All right, so got our fresh fettuccine. Got our carbonara, our green pepper carbonara sauce. Now again, it's also the possibility of tossing this past directly into the pot, as I'd mentioned. Let's grab our uh, chicken breast. I'll just move this out of frame for a second. We'll grab one of the chicken breasts that's been resting over here. Sharp knife, bit of a bias. Slice it out nicely. Nice and juicy. Bring our plate back in. Put our chicken breast on. Shingle that across. We saved a little bit of uh, Parmesan cheese. Put that directly on top of the, uh, the chicken. Take some of our chopped herbs and we'll just garnish the pasta around the chicken. Looking good. 
a little chive knot for garnish. And ready for dinner. Clean the plate up if you need to. One last thing. If you're a garlic bread fan or a bread fan in general, get yourself a nice piece of garlic bread. A little garlic bread garnish here. Ready to go. Bon appetit. Thanks for watching.